What's up guys, back with another Twin Motion tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I created this rendering using Twin Motion. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so now we have a different view of our 3D model. And with this one, I wanna show a little bit of some of the extra things I did as far as a little bit of lighting and how I use uh, the neon texture to kind of bring a little bit of flair to my rendering and just kind of give you a little bit of an overall uh, technique that I use with the path tracer. Okay, so let's zoom in here and just kind of give you a little bit of a overview of what we have in the interior of our 3D model. So as you can see, we have a nice pendant light that's coming from the top of our ceiling and we have a um, carpet we have some couches and we have some things in our kitchen area so this is to create even though this is an exterior rendering i wanted to fill everything in in the interior so when we do our rendering shot that it looks like there's activity that's going on in inside of our our um, residential house here and i think that's important so let's see and there's nothing here it's just kind of a little bit of a bed and you can find these assets on sketchfab you can find them in the twin motion library so you can go to objects home and you can go to living room because we have a living room setting and you have different options here that you can use to your discretion or you can go to sketchfab and they also have a uh, a lot of different options that you can choose from so just kind of use some of your creative ideas or your creative experience um, what do you think a living room looks like or should look like or or what do you want it to look like so that's kind of a little bit of an overview there and as you can see we can see from the outside so i did use um lighting in this area so let's see if we can find our lights here and i'm going here in the scene graph to search um, for some of the the lights that i've used um, let's see if we can find it Okay, so we have our area light. I did plant an area light here. And as you can see, I turned the intensity down to 25 and I made adjustments to the width and the attenuation. So just kind of showing you that. You can crank up the intensity. You can't see it, um, the intensity change because it's not being rendered, but just kind of letting you know that that is an option. You can change the length as you can see. I'm changing the length of um, of our light and you can change the width as well so you want to be careful with that you don't want to go overboard but if we go to our scene graph and put in area light it will bring up all my lights that I've used in this scene so we also have one that is being picked up I believe in our kitchen Let's see. Okay. So that one's picking up our other one. So yeah, here's our other one. So our other one is up above our pendant light and that helps illuminate this section here of our model. And our other area light helps illuminate our kitchen. So when we begin our rendering, it looks like uh, the lights are on. So I use that technique to kind of help um, bring some, some light into our scene. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is click on our, our rendering or our image that we created. So you know the first thing you do is create your image and you can rename it whatever you like. I call mine render one. And right now, this is just a low level uh, rendering showing our setup here and 
one of the things that I forgot to do is let's take off path tracer. So I want to show you, I do have some lights, some strip lights here that I modeled in Revit. And what I did was that right now it's not showing up, right? So we're going to go to our user library and we go to random and I have a neon zero two. So we're going to go to um, our replace material and apply to object. So right now I'm going to drag and drop to our little strip light that I've designed here. And there we are. All right. So as you can see, that gives us a, a really cool kind of look. And it's something that I came up with uh, in Revit and just kind of created these strip lights. I modeled them in and it came out pretty good in Twin Motion. All right. So as you can see, we have a lot of lighting going on, but it looks really good um, when we begin to render. Guys, if you're liking this video, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Hit the notification bell as well. And um, check out this 3D scene. It's on my website at renderreboot.com. All right. So let's get right into some of our settings that I use in Path Tracer to get the results that I've gotten. All right. So here I'm going to use HDRI and SkyDome. So in our preview, you see our HDRI is on default right now. What I'm going to do is use a HDRI that I actually got from uh, Ambient CG. So we're going to use the Day Sky HDRI 058A, and I'm just going to drag and drop that onto our scene here. Okay, so let's go to Render Path Tracer. So now you can see our HDRI in the background. You see our lighting in our interior of our scene and you see our uh, strip lighting here as well. Okay. So right now our path tracer is set at a very low level. Let's increase that just a little bit to 516. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and increase it all the way to 2048. And we'll come back and play around with our max bounces and um, our fireflies as well. Okay, so let's go to environment and let's start making some adjustments. All right, so we're gonna, we already made adjustments to our HDRI, as you can see our background here. And here we have an intensity at one. I'm going to keep that intensity. I don't want to enhance that intensity anymore. Uh, just kind of give you an overview of what happens when you uh, have too much intensity. Your scene gets way too bright and this can go up. Um, pretty significantly so let's keep it um, at one for now and let's look at our rotation so right now that was at 90 degrees we're gonna rotate it to 180 so as you can see our background has changed and you start to see some shadows come into play and our lighting placement and you start to really see uh, the light that I've created inside our little garage area uh, how the lighting is actually reflecting off our vehicle as well. So we may make some adjustments to our lighting because it looks like it's a little too bright, but that's okay. You start to see our area lights um, put into action. So you start to see lighting in our kitchen area and the lighting here in our living room space as well. Okay, so now that we have those set up, Let's kind of see what else we can do to enhance our rendering. We can go to, okay. So looks like I have accomplished everything in my environment to where I'm satisfied. We can go to camera and let's start looking at our exposure. I do have auto exposure checked, uh, but you still can make some adjustments to your exposure. And right now I have it at one let's change it to 180 and as you can see that brighten our scene up um, a good bit which looks pretty good all right so right now we have white balance at 69 let's change that to 62 
And that kind of gave it a blue tinge, which I think looks pretty good. All right, so one thing that I want to do, let's quit our media for a second. And we're going to go to our material picker and we're going to select these guys because it's way too bright. I'm going to maybe make that five. All right, let's test it out. So as you can see, that made a good adjustment there. Let's make sure that they all change to five. Just kind of double checking. Okay, so it looks like they all um, made uh, adjustment, which is good. All right, let's continue. All right, so here we're gonna go to our local exposure. We're gonna enable that. And as you can see, when I enable that, my scene seems to look washed, but that's because we don't have any highlights or shadows. So you can crank our highlights up all the way to one and we're gonna crank our shadows all the way to one. So as you can see, my scene uh, is coming back together, looking pretty good. And just to kind of point out, um, I'm still really impressed by the Twin Motion Smart Grass. So that's the uh, material that I use in here. I also, for the plants and the trees, I use Max Tree. And all the other assets pretty much came from Twin Motion Library or a sketchfab library. So I think that it came out pretty good. All right, guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me, hit the notification bell, and uh, leave a comment down below if you um, have any questions. Okay, so right now, looking at our lens, we are at a uh, focal length of 18, and I wanna zoom in a little more. Let's do 20. So we can, you know, actually, let's do 21. So we can do, kind of get a little closer up to our rendering and um, it looks pretty good. All right, so now let's go to our vignetting. Our vignetting, so now we're saving, which is great. Always have your automatic uh, save uh, checked or activated in your settings. Just in case of a crash, you never know. Um, I would hate for you to get really far along and you're rendering and it crashes on you then you have to start over nobody likes to start over uh i know i don't like to start over but you know that's okay so we're prepared all right so anyway we got that saved let's go to our vignetting and here in our vignetting it was at 50 percent. i want to change that to 25 percent and the vignetting just darkens our corners and on this one in this particular rendering uh, I didn't want uh, our corners to be too dark. So our sharpness is at 50%. We're gonna lower that to 20%. And we're gonna check mark our parallelism, okay? All right, so everything is looking pretty good. Everything is lining up so far. Now here in our rendering, we're gonna make a few more adjustments. We already have our samples per pixel at 204080, I mean 2048. And we're going to increase our max bounce. We want more light bouncing in our scene. So we got 30. And just look how I look at those shadows. They're, the light is hitting our trees and you start to see the shadows from the trees and um, starting to look really good. I really like how these renderings turned out. Uh, so we're gonna leave our emissive materials checked and our denoiser checked. And our fireflies, we make that adjustment. Let's bring that down to five. Okay, so now we're gonna go to FX and we're gonna start making some adjustments to our contrast and our saturation, our color gradient. And I believe on this one, I'm not gonna put a filter on this one, but we are gonna put a color gradient on it. So look at our contrast here. And for our contrast, it was at 50%. Let's go to 38. And it kind of toned it down a little bit and our saturation, I still want to increase that and make that 55%. So here we're gonna to go to our color gradient and different options here. Uh, it was hard to choose and pick which one I really wanted because I think uh, a couple of these really caught my eye. And, you know, I really like just how you're able to uh, pick a, uh, more of a color gradient that will help bring some type of character to your rendering um, 
and it also can actually help enhance your realism too so for this one i chose um i believe vice 2. so let's look for vice 2. okay so we got vice 2 selected and i think that that was a pretty good choice i think that um I could have went with uh, different options uh, and I think that it still would have been a nice rendering but I went with Vice 2 and for this one I didn't do a filter and those who don't know filter you can uh, choose different options here so just kind of showing you uh, usually I, I'll choose line light and uh, I'm not going to use it in this one all right so here for our image we're going to select 8k and anytime you're uh, selecting doing a very uh, high output size such as 8k or higher it's going to prompt you to use tile render for high resolution images so you can select tile render you would not need to do that if you select 2k or 4k um, it's not needed but anytime you're looking at um, an output size of 8k or higher then it will it will prompt you to do that so but yeah so i think that this rendering came out really well guys i hope you learned something today um don't forget to smash that like button for me hit that notification bell and uh man look i appreciate your time and we'll be back with another one